Welcome back. It is Friday, April 26th, and the MLB, our four best bets are on the way. It's Austin, joined by Logan. Let's recap yesterday, a two and three day. But I'm feeling like we're entering the day with a little bit of momentum because we got to cash the parlay of the play, our second to last play. And then the A's and Yankees under eight and a half was pretty sweat free as well. We were an error on the final out of the game in White Sox Twins from being a three and two day. And that's just kind of been the difference lately. We just haven't had that luck there. Mariners and Rangers, you could argue probably should have hit as well. Rangers had so many chances to push it to four to four. And then the Brewers and Pirates nerf you was a donut as Wilson Contreras sent one three million feet. But a two and three day, we're feeling like the reads are starting to turn our way. Some the tides are turning, hopefully, and hopefully we can dominate and have another winning day. As always, if you haven't been tapped into the parlay of the day, that's going to be our first pick of the day. It's going to be on Odds Checker. I know I hate doing something like this where I'm like, hey, you got to click a link, but it's going to be the top link in the description in the pinned comment. We've hit two in a row doing some alt lines. We really like the one that we're going to cook up today. You can check it out. It should be live around 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. We'll be live pinned comment description and at the end of the video tap into that i'll update it once it is live on their website 100 free you don't have to pay anything to see it just a little article we do a little uh, a little write-up for something and sometimes we talk about other games that we might not talk about in this video but my last thing to note if you haven't hit that subscribe button what are you doing Come on, do us a favor, hit that subscribe button, drop a like, it's Friday, let's enter the weekend in style, making you guys some money going 4-0 today. But Logan, I'm going to let you lead it off with the second pick of the video, and I'm going to let you uh, take it away. Where are you going today? Yeah, I am going to Boston, and I'm going to go ahead and ride with the Cubs on the money line. Minus 110 odds on FanDuel is your best value on this one. Yes, I'm, I'm riding the money line, and I do like the Cubs to get the outright win. Let's start with trends in this game. Red Sox, if you've been fading them at home, well, you're profitable. Red Sox are only three and seven at home. I don't like to, to bet, bet on trends like this, but it's just a trend that I notice, right? It's not the reason I'm, I'm making this pick. Red Sox just aren't the same uh, type of team at home. The question in this game comes to, if you're looking at the starting pitching, you're just gonna say, both these guys have a sub one ERA. Who will be the first of those two to regress? Maybe both at the same time, but I, my money is on Cutter Crawford to regress. Cutter Crawford starts for the Red Sox. 0.66 ERA and a 0.99 whip. What you know? What a what a great start for Cutter Crawford. I mean, those numbers are straight up impressive. My question is, will he be able to sustain that throughout the year? Probably not, just because that's not that's not really sustainable. But I I do think, it, given his great start of the year, there's still some weaknesses in his game because you got to look at the stat cast numbers. You got to poke holes in his game, even though he's been great. 36 percentile and walk percentage. Free base runners, always a bad thing. Uh, and 36 percentile in ground ball percentage. Fly ball outs in in, uh, in Fenway can be dangerous. Cutter Crawford could, could be flirting with danger with walks and uh, fly ball outs. 48th percentile in whiff percentage as well. It doesn't always get the swing and a miss. I think this Cubs offense can definitely ambush him today. The Cubs are an offense I can actually trust. Ninth in batting average with runners in scoring position. Cutter could easily walk some guys into scoring position, and that could be the difference in this game. It could be a lower scoring game, and which one of these starting pitchers is going to make a few mistakes? I think it's it's more likely to be Cutter Crawford. I just trust this Cubs team. You look at what they did in that Astros series, super impressive. I mean, you could say bad Astros, but I'm going to say good Cubs. Cubs, fourth in walks drawn and fourth in runs scored per game. Again, I just like this offense a lot. I think they do give Imanaga some run support today. Imanaga starts for the Cubs, 0.84 ERA and a 0.75 whip. Impressive numbers for him as well. Imanaga is great at not walking batters, unlike Cutter Crawford. He's 96th percentile in walk percentage. I don't like free base runners, so that's good to see. 67th percentile in K percentage, 91st percentile in chase percentage. He's just a little bit better, in my opinion, at getting the, the consistent swing and a miss than Cutter Crawford. And I think Imanaga is in a great position to deal today. Why? Because I told you, I like the Cubs offense so much more than I like the Red Sox offense. Boston's 27th in strikeouts per game. I've seen times when they, they look lost at the plate. It's hard not to see Imanaga being able to deal today. And at home, Boston's 23rd in runs scored uh, per game and 29th in hits. They, for some reason, they're just not hitting at Fenway. And until they really figure it out, I got to fade away. Boston's only hitting 200 against lefties at home as well. Obviously, Imanaga is a lefty. And 22nd in batting average with runners in scoring position. I hate teams that cannot hit with runners in scoring position. That was actually the Red Sox downfall yesterday in that Guardians game. I believe they were like one for seven with runners in scoring position. 
just can't have it. So an offense that's already in my mind streaky comes to two at home, comes back home where they haven't been playing well. I, I, I see a pretty big advantage for the Cubs in this one. And then bullpens, Boston 11th in bullpen ERA, Cubs 13th in bullpen ERA. So pretty neck and neck there. What's going to be the difference in this one? I think it's going to be the Cubs bats. I, I like the Cubs uh, lineup one through nine a lot more than I like the Red Sox. Give me the Cubs to get the outright win as my favorite bet of the day. But Austin, where are you going for yours? Yeah, I'm going to be going to a team that wrecked us yesterday. And I don't think this should come as a big surprise to y'all. I'm taking the Rangers, taking their team total over four and a half runs. It's about minus 120 on basically every single book. It should not go up to five and a half. If it goes up there, I feel pretty confident, even more confident about this one. But minus 120 on the DraftKings is the best bet you're going to get. Now, like I said, yesterday, the Rangers hurt us. They hurt Logan and I, and it's been a theme. If you run back our losses, you're typically pretty profitable. And while I did consider the full game over here, I don't really, you never know what you're getting from a playoff Nate. I mean, Nathan Evaldi either pitches a shutout or he gives up like five earned runs. And I'd rather not fade him. I'll just fade Graham Ashcraft. Like I said, yesterday, the Rangers, three runs, one for six with runners in scoring position. They didn't even hit well, two, hit 205 as a team, but they got Nate Lau back. They got a lot of guys that I'm pretty confident these guys will be able to get the job done against Graham Ashcraft. Now, Ashcraft supports a 5.24 ERA and a 1.34 whip. And his four starts this year, he's allowed two, five, one, one and five earned runs. He's done all the work himself in some of these starts where he gives up the five earned runs. And I certainly think this could be a start that he does that. Now, I'm not counting on Graham Ashcraft to do it all, but if you look at his props, his earned runs prop is two and a half minus 155 on the over. His hits allowed prop is five and a half minus 160 on the over. So, they're expecting some heavy base, base, the base paths to be filled with guys. Comes out if we can get those timely hits. Yesterday, the Rangers couldn't get them. Hopefully today they can. The Rangers are a team that's been really good, especially against righties. I mean, this is a team at home against right-handed pitchers. Fourth best batting average, third highest WRC plus, another offensive metric. It's just the top five offense against righties at home. Just a home offense in general. Coming off the game, they really didn't hit the ball too well. You look at Ashcraft here, just like Logan was talking about, getting those timely hits. Look at these stats. Ashcraft is allowing a 316 batting average with runners in scoring position this year. He's also, with two outs and runners in scoring position, 417 batting average allowed. So he is failing to get those timely outs. And that's great for us because sometimes this is what it's going to be determined by. Two outs, runners on, maybe second and third. Can you get that hit? Ashcraft's been struggling to get those guys out. If we can get those timely hits, I really feel good about the Rangers putting up at least five runs today. This is also just uh, when you get to Ashcraft, you're going to get to the Reds bullpen. They're all right. You never really know what you're getting from the Reds bullpen. Buck Farmer, one of the guys that uh, is, is one of their bullpen arms I actually kind of like. He pitched yesterday. I don't expect him to pitch today. So outside of that, not really a lot of bullpen arms in there that I'm like, oh, no, please don't come in. But I really think they could get three or four runs up on Ashcraft, and then we just need one run on the bullpen. I, I mean, I'll take it. If Ashcraft starts off, slow, uh, starts off pretty well, don't worry. Teams are hitting 458 in their third appearance against Ashcraft. So... Maybe the Reds are like, let's try to get another inning out of him. That could be where the big inning comes. We know the Rangers are a team that when the hit parade starts, it, it doesn't stop for a while. and They just keep racking up the hits. Ashcraft is a guy that, you know, likes to keep the ball on the uh, ground. He has a high ground ball percentage. But I like the Rangers to put up five runs today. So give me their team total over four and a half as my favorite pick of the day. But Logan, it is time for Nerfy Nation, baby. Everyone's favorite time of the day. Raft music's going flags are out today we're going to our nerfy goat and if you know you know where we're going we don't even care who's on the other side that's how much we trust this guy because we're going to miami we will be backing the nationals and marlins taking the no run for stunning here minus 115 on DraftKings. now like we said nerfy goat when jesus lazardo is on the mound we're going to take it most likely than not unless he's facing one of the best offenses in the league even like the braves we're a little hesitant there but he's still been able to do the job against the braves before lazardo Lazardo, despite his ERA, not looking great. 5-0 and on Nerfies. That's what he does. He comes in, gets those three outs. Trevor Williams, or not, uh, Nationals are 29th in first inning runs. So they're not an offense that's really been putting up a lot of runs in the first inning. He's loose to Lazardo. He's our Nerfy goat. He's always delivered for us. Was really good last year. Really good this year. We're going to continue to roll with them. But I assume Jesus gets us those first three outs. Logan, who's going to hopefully take us home for us? Yeah, Trevor Williams, do your job today, please. Trevor Williams, two and two on no run first innings. He's not as good as Jesus Lazardo. And that's why Austin prefaces this with it doesn't really matter who's on the other side. Can we do we see a pathway uh to to 
cashing this nerfy. I do, even though Trevor Williams is not an ace pitcher. He's facing the Marlins, which are tenth and first inning runs. Who is he likely going to see in the in the top of the order? We don't know the Marlins lineup right now, but it's probably going to be Luis Arise. Which, if we could get him out, that would be a huge first out. Even if he does get on base, though, you got Josh Bell, a, a career three for sixteen versus Trevor Williams and Jazz Chisholm. Uh, probably one, he's only one for ten. So probably those guys are the who's your who's going to follow. And I think Trevor Williams is able to actually navigate his way through this lineup and get us those three outs we need. At the end of the day, can he get us those those ground ball outs in, in the first inning? I think so. Hopefully he can he can uh back, back Jesus Lazardo because that's really what it comes down to. Nerfy Nation, let's get one. Let's fly the flags. Like I said, we just need Trevor to do his job. We're pretty confident Lazardo. That's what he does. So Trevor, we are fully expecting if you want a free leg of a hit parlay, Luis Arise will be on base. So you can just take that to the bank. He always is on base. But that's just how it is. But we really like that nerfy. I think Trevor can take us home, given those splits against those Marlins batters. But those are our favorite picks of the day. As always, if you want to go check out our parlay of the day, we post it in a little bit. We've hit two in a row, trying to go for three in a row. Going to have some alt unders, overs. Go check it out. It's going to be linked on the screen. Also, linked in the pinned comment in the description. Austin Logan signing out. We're going 4-0 tonight. We're starting this hot streak. We'll see you guys back again tomorrow. Peace.